Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are going to be looking at forecasts for Tesla's first quarter delivery and production report, which we should get tomorrow, Saturday. I'll plan on doing a live stream when we do get those numbers, but as usual, I think it's helpful to go through these forecasts to kind of understand the context when we do receive those. Then today we'll also take a quick look at some other automakers which have started to report their U.S. sales for Q1. Quick look at the stock, not a whole lot to report, another pretty low volume day. Tesla up two-thirds of a percent to $1,084.59 to close the week. The Nasdaq on the day was up three-tenths of a percent. All right, we're going to start off with looking at the forecast for Q1 delivery and production numbers, but before we even get into that, I would just say that this quarter is probably the least interesting quarter to me that we have had for a long time in terms of these numbers, so we're not going to go quite as detailed as we usually do. There are a few reasons I say that, but they all kind of stem from the same basic concept of generally when we're going through these, we use it to inform what's going to happen in future quarters and future years based on the production rates that we're seeing. No one individual quarter is all that important, but the trajectory that we end up seeing is. That's a big part of why we care so much more about production than the delivery number, because that gives us a better clue at what's going to happen going forward. So what we're actually able to learn here in terms of what that trajectory is going to look like from Q1 is pretty limited. We kind of already know where Fremont is at. We do hope and expect for increased output from Fremont, but because of how much Shanghai has grown, any increase from Fremont is going to just be a little bit less significant now and even more so going forward. So we can't learn a whole lot from that. As for Shanghai, we kind of already know where that is at because of the CPCA data. The big thing for Shanghai is when the next phase happens and how quickly that will get ramped up. And we'll learn a lot more about that in Q2 than we will from anything here in Q1. So that additional phase, that's gonna be huge for the trajectory for the rest of the year. And then of course, in addition to that, Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. It's awesome to see them finally starting production at those factories, but what we can learn from that from the Q1 numbers is next to nothing. So most of the things that are going to influence how the rest of the year stacks up, we don't get much information on those things from these numbers. Now for the Q2 numbers, that'll be a completely different story. We should be able to learn a lot from those. In addition for Q1, we know there have been significant supply chain challenges. We know there has been downtime. Both of those things make it a lot more difficult to extract Tesla's actual progress. For example, let's say these numbers significantly beat expectations. Well, that probably means that we just overestimated downtime or overestimated the impact in the supply chain. Those would be good things, especially if the supply chain is looking good, but based on comments that Elon and Tesla have made, we expect that to improve throughout the year anyway, so it doesn't end up being something that we can necessarily learn a whole lot from. On the flip side, if Tesla misses, well, they were probably over-impacted by the supply chain or had more downtime than what we were forecasting. Now, all that being said, that doesn't mean that I'm not excited to see these numbers. It doesn't mean that we can't learn anything from them. Certainly we will. It's just that this time around, these numbers are a little bit less informative than they would be on your average quarter. All right, so hopping into our production tracking spreadsheet, the first thing I'll say is that if you are an audio listener, I'll put the YouTube link in the description, probably good to flip over and watch this one as it is spreadsheet heavy. So looking at our spreadsheet here, just to refamiliarize people, the sections on the left, we've got total production and then weekly and daily production rates broken down by factory. And then on the right, we have it broken down further by vehicle model. So model Y, model three, model S and X at Fremont and Shanghai. The cells in gray, those are actuals. The cells in orange, those we have high confidence in. Most of that data is coming from a China Passenger Car Association reporting. And then things in yellow, those are my own projections. So we'll start off with Giga Shanghai. As we have talked about, we've got a little bit more information there. We have the CPCA reports of 68,000 vehicles produced in January, 55,000 produced in February, which remember did have an impact from the Chinese New Year. As we have talked about previously, there were reports that there was some production happening during that period of time, which was about a week. I'm estimating about three and a half days then of downtime. That 55,000 number then, that still shows a little bit of production rate progress from January. Looking at March then, we have similar complications because we know that Shanghai production was halted from March 28th through the end of the quarter. That takes off four production days. And then in mid-March, we also had that short stoppage for testing procedures that took off about a day and a half. For those four days at the end of the quarter, obviously there's no making that up until Q2, but for those days in mid-March, because Tesla is supply constrained, depending on the flow in the supply chain, Tesla could have made up any lost time at Giga Shanghai specifically if that downtime did not affect their available supplies. I'm not really forecasting for that, but keep that in mind as we look at the March numbers I have here. So by model, I've got a little bit more than 34,000 Model Y, a little bit more than 24,000 Model 3. That's a forecast for the weekly production rates factoring in downtime here to increase about 2% in March. And for Model 3, that basically gets it back to levels that we have seen before. Model Y, it's a little bit of incremental improvement, which is not uncommon to see as Tesla gets more efficient with their production processes. So a little bit of incremental improvement, and then again, if Tesla is able to actually get back that lost day and a half of production in mid-March, that could add another 3,300 vehicles or so here to the production that I forecasted for Shanghai for March, which is 58,800 vehicles. 
if supply constraints weren't as significant in March as they were in January and February, then we could see those weekly production rates increase. If both those things happen, it's within reason to see a number greater than 62,000 for Shanghai for March. Of course, the alternative is also possible. Downtime could disrupt the flow that could impact the production rates. Supply constraints could be more significant as other factories may have dealt with downtime as well. So my best estimate is falling somewhere in between, and that's what gets me to around that 59,000. So for total quarter then, I have Shanghai at about 182,000 vehicles. We then hop over to Fremont, which is a little bit less scientific. We could look at VIN ranges. We could look at registration data. Personally, because of what I mentioned at the beginning, I just really don't think it's worth it for this quarter. So I'm taking it simple here. I'm just basically applying a 5% improved production rate because there are two fewer days this quarter than in Q4. That means that the actual production increase is only about 2% on those vehicles. That would put Model 3 and Y at about 116,500 for the quarter. That would annualize to about 470,000 vehicles, which would still be a little bit below Tesla's stated production capacity of 500,000 in Fremont on Model 3 and Model Y. And we do know that Tesla does plan to increase capacity on those vehicles in Fremont over time, so I think that's definitely within reason. And then all that's left for Fremont is to add the S and the X. Last quarter we saw 13,100 of those vehicles produced. I'm not expecting a huge increase here. I'd love to be wrong on that and to see a number of 20,000 or more, but I am still expecting them to be ramping this up, so I'm putting in 15,000 there for now. About a 15% increase quarter over quarter, which is a relatively common ramp up percentage for Tesla. So altogether then that brings my total Fremont production number to 131,500. That's up about 5,000 vehicles from Q4. Then we just add those together and get our total production. But wait, not so fast because we have to add a column here for Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. We finally got some official production numbers there. Don't really know what they're going to be. I'm just putting in 1,000 here. I'm not sure how much, if any, Tesla will count the Texas production, but that total is definitely within the margin of error on these other numbers. And Tesla's not going to break that out for us, so we'll probably never fully know. But Bringing in that 1,000 vehicles, that brings my total Q1 production estimate to 314,800. That'd be about 9,000 more vehicles than Q4, or sequential increase of 3%. But remember, a lot of downtime and a shorter quarter, year over year, up 75%. As for the delivery numbers, I think you all know I care a lot less about that number, but it is influential for the Q1 earnings report, which I actually do care quite a bit about, and I think we'll learn a lot from. But in terms of the deliveries here, I am expecting Tesla to increase their inventory, meaning production would outpace deliveries, primarily because the last two quarters and for the last five quarters, Tesla has drawn down inventory. It was sitting at an all-time low of four days of supply for about 16,000 vehicles to start Q1. That could go a little bit lower, especially as we did have the downtime at Shanghai in terms of production at the end of the quarter. That will inherently reduce inventory and transit as those vehicles just don't end up being produced. Because of that, I wouldn't actually end up being too surprised if deliveries did outpace production, but I also expect because of those lockdowns that Tesla probably had some difficulty delivering vehicles. So I do expect inventory to grow, but not by a whole lot, only about 2,500 vehicles. That puts my delivery number at 312,300. That would end up being about 3,700 more vehicles than Q4 for a 1% increase quarter over quarter and a 69% increase year over year, which I promise was not planned. So that's where I'm at. As I mentioned earlier this week, the analyst consensus as of Monday was 312,500 deliveries, so I would be right on that, but that was before the Shanghai shutdown. Consensus has definitely dropped a little bit since then. Goldman Sachs in a note today said that that was at 309,000. So I do think my estimate here would be a little bit ahead of expectations. I think that Tesla has room to beat these, but supply chain downtime could be more impactful than what I've got here. We'll just have to find out tomorrow. Goldman Sachs, by the way, since we do have their note up here, their estimate is 315,000, but they are hedging that to the downside, saying that, quote, the shutdown of Giga Shanghai during the last week of the quarter and the related logistics challenges in China imply to us that there could be some slight downside to our 315,000 delivery estimate and that deliveries could end up being in line to modestly above the street at 309,000 per visible alpha consensus data, end quote. Another interesting data point that Goldman Sachs looks at is Tesla app downloads. They've looked at this historically and they've found a decent correlation between app downloads and quarterly deliveries. They say that, quote, Moreover, Tesla app downloads suggest overall demand remains strong with app downloads up low single digits quarter over quarter and up significantly year over year, albeit with some geographic dispersion. App downloads as of March 25th are tracking down 1% up 18% and up 4% quarter over quarter in the US, Europe, and China respectively, comparing the first 11 weeks of first quarter 22 data with the first 11 weeks of fourth quarter 21, end quote. So mixing those all together, that would probably mix out based on that 18% growth in Europe to a little bit higher than what my forecast is, but again, the correlation here isn't perfect. It's more directional, and I think that direction would be pretty supportive of the ballpark that we're in. 
All right, as for other news today, thankfully it's been a pretty quiet news day. We don't have a whole lot to cover in addition to this forecast, but we are starting to get US deliveries reported from other automakers. So specifically here, we've got reports from GM, Toyota, Nissan, and Mazda. Remember, this is just sales data in the United States, and these comparisons are year over year. So starting with GM, they said that their sales fell 20% year over year to about 513,000 vehicles. As for Toyota, pretty similar results. Their sales in the US fell nearly 15%, to a similar 515,000 vehicles. Mazda did a little bit better. Their year-to-date sales are about 82,000 vehicles down 1%. And then Nissan, quite a bit worse, 200,000 vehicles down 30% year over year. Looking a little bit closer at a couple things from the GM numbers, although they were down 20% year over year, they were actually up 16% quarter over quarter. They specifically mentioned improved semiconductor supply supporting higher production, although they said that the issues were not fully behind them. Speaking to improvement though, that should hopefully bode well for Tesla too. And then also I found kind of interesting, their estimate for the first quarter was that the seasonally adjusted annual rate was 14.1 million vehicles for the US for light vehicle sales versus 16.8 million a year ago. So they're basically saying that their estimate for the total US market is for it to be down about 16% for the first quarter. Finally then for GM, we got to look at their EV sales as we know they are the de facto leader of EVs. They sold 457 this quarter. That was 358 Chevy Bolts and 99 EV Hummers. Not an April Fool's joke, except for, I guess, the, the leadership part, but still next to nothing for GM for EV sales, though they do expect to restart bolt production on April 4th. So those 350 vehicles must have been older inventory that have now been cleared from that battery recall. All right, that is where we'll wrap it up for today then, but just again, a reminder to keep an eye on the channel tomorrow for a live stream reacting to the delivery report. I don't know if I'll turn that into an audio podcast, so audio listeners, check that out on YouTube. But as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for that April 2nd delivery episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.